Okay, so in this video we have a question from Lucia, and we're told that this person, right, we can call him Mr. whatever, Mr. Smith, invests $10,000. So this is the amount of money that we're investing. And out of that $10,000, some is invested at 8% and some at 12%. We don't know how much, right? That's This is pretty typical how these problems work. So some at 8% and some other amount, we don't know how much, and some at 12%. So now we're told that, okay, well, if the return was equal for both amounts, so if, oops, under this, if the return, so if the money you get back for each different investment is equal, right, for both investments, was equal, how much was invested in each account? So if the return for both investments were equal, well then, how much was invested in each, oops, boy, in, invested in each investment? Right, these are two different investments and we want to know how much was invested in each. Now intuitively, we have $10,000, right? This is the amount that we're investing. And some portion at 8% is going to equal the amount at 12%. And what that means is, well, right, because we have a, some portion of 8%, some portion of 12%. And the question is, well, how do you split up this money so that when you invest at these rates, the total gained, right, that's the return, the total gained, over the course is the same for both. Now intuitively, you have to think here because 8% and 12% are not equal. So that for intuitively, what I'm thinking to myself is you'll need more, right, more than half of all the money at 8% to equal the amount at 12%. Because if you think about your investment, right, if I invest this large chunk over here at 8%, and I invest a smaller amount at 12%, then they could be equal because you're making more money on the 12% chunk than the 8% chunk of money. So really you'll need more of the money invested at 8% to equal the amount made at 12%. This is kind of my guideline as I'm going through this. I know I should get more money that's being invested at 8%. And that'll help me figure out this answer. So to really get cracking on this problem, I start setting variables. I say that X is going to give us the amount invested at 8%. And I know that altogether we have $10,000. Now if I subtract the amount invested at 8%, well, if we're investing all of the money we have, and we we think about 10,000 minus the amount invested at 8%, what's left over? Well, that's the amount invested at 12%. All right, so here, right here, this is our expression for 12%, and this is the expression for 8%. And all we're saying is that some amount was invested at 8%, and the rest was invested at 12%. And the key is that after a year, the two amounts of money, whatever we chose, give us the same return. So that means you're trying to find 8% of what number, so 0 0.08 of what number, equals 0.12 of what other number. When does this happen that 8% of one number equals 12% of another? Here we go. To solve, I'm going to rewrite the equation and use the distributive property, 0.12 times these two pieces. Well, 12% of 10,000, what's that? Right? What's 0.12 times 10,000? I know 10% is 1,000, and 2% or 1% is 100, so 12% should be 1,200. And 0.12 times negative x is minus 0.12x. We can solve here by adding 0.12 to both sides, right, 0.12x. And what happens? Well, this gets canceled out, right? That's 0. 0. 0.08 plus 0.12x. What's that? Well, it's 0.2 or 0.20x, or right, like that, equals 1,200. And now I, I would divide both sides by 0.2. I want to solve for x. So this is equal to 1. And what does x equal? Well, you know, let's just work through this here. 1,200 
divided by 0.2, right? 6,000. So x is equal to 6,000. And you could have solved this step intuitively. I would think, okay, how many times does 20 go into 1,200? Oh, okay, well, 60 times. Yeah, but well, this is 100 times smaller. So it'll go into 1,200 100 times more. So instead of 60, it's 6,000. And x is the number invested at 8%. Right, so that's a lot of the money, a little bit more than half. And the rest, well, it's 10,000 minus x, or minus 6,000. That gives us that there's $4,000 invested at 12%. And that, you know, that kind of fits our intuitive model. Less had to be invested at 12% than at 8% because together they made the same amount of money after the interest. And, and the 12% should gain at a faster rate than 8%. So setting up this equation, we can figure out just how much was invested in each type of account, whatever it was, whether it was bonds or savings or whatever, or stocks, right? We don't know in this question. But anyway, I hope that helps. Um, 10000 invested, $6,000 at 8%, $4,000 at 12%. Thanks.